I had just finished reading The Align Method, which is my friend Aaron Alexander's book. He talked about a therapy that's really prevalent in the Czech Republic for psychiatric conditions, and it's a therapy where you go into the darkness. And it was just like a little footnote in my mind. And then I go to do a podcast with Akshay, who does as many things as he can to test his own limits, to find where he's afraid and push beyond that. And he's rattling off all of these crazy things that he's done. And then he mentions the darkness. The synchronicity of that happening twice within like a week span, something just clicked. It was like a trigger. I knew at that point, I'm going into the darkness. Well, a few months ago, I spent seven days in pitch darkness, isolation, and silence. Like just, it's called a darkness retreat. Just dark complete therapy. darkness. Dark therapy. Yeah. Yeah, you cool. know, like, uh, yeah, exactly. But this was like, uh, you know. I want to do that, yeah. You would love it. You would, ab- and, and, I don't know if I would love it, but I would, <laughs> if I had that attitude, would, I would love it. You would it. love yeah. it, but. Yeah. Yeah, but. <laughs> to be in the darkness where, like, there's literally nothing sensory that you can use to distract yourself from what's going on internally, like, I knew that it would be so powerful. Blackness used to be a nightly thing for us, right? And so now it is all the more soothing and all the more necessary because those things are ancient and timeless. Folks are gravitating towards higher and higher octane uh, psychoactives and the intensity of this, you know, inspired rites of passages. We are yearning right, to get out of the gravitational pull of that materialist worldview. Darkness has been with us since the beginning of our evolutionary history. In our evolutionary past, darkness is where the predators were. And darkness archetypically represents and reflects what awe is to humans. And awe is one of the most interesting emotions that we're capable of because it's simultaneously rapture and fear. It's here where we find our greatest uh, dilemma of reconciling duality. We're all confronted by these conflicting uh, pulls. When you become aware of these subconscious processes that are driving you constantly, you know, get more and more access to will, you know, to choice. Yeah, what good is choice if there are no choices? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> if everything is just a movie. Don Howard is always with me. His wisdom, his essence, his presence is there with me always. And so I'm just honored to carry his lineage, which is here. The smiling jaguar of Shavin the Shavin priests and shamans would go down into the catacomb of Shavin, down into absolute black, and they would do Vilka, which is a snuff that's 5-MeO-DMT, NN-DMT, and Bufotany. And so they would go down into the blackness, create an exogenous DMT experience, and allow themselves to transform into the smiling jaguar and emerge as the jaguar shamans. I'm sitting in the woods and uh, just taking in the last view of the trees that I'm gonna have. And uh, and then uh, I saw two ravens come and flap their wings and it was exactly the same as when my grandma died. And uh, climbed up a mountain and two ravens came to see me then. And the ravens have always signified that my grandma is with me. And I forget about her a lot, even though she's tattooed on my arm. And uh, I hope I can just remember. I'm going to remember. Fuck all this, I hope I can, just do it. My grandma and my mom are the closest to ever showing me unconditional love. So I love you, Grandma. 
Thanks for coming to see me. I'll see you in the everything. <laughs> Before he went in and he was in such an incredible mental space you know we were um, we were fairly close around that time and had talked pretty often and I remember saying goodbye to him before he went in and um, said a little prayer for him and that was that so here's my little room that's my little bed water bottle that's where I have to memorize where all my clothes are. I think I got it down. Underwear on the top, warm stuff in the middle, onesie on the bottom. This is where I can meditate, do yoga, got a roller ball, and try and get some deep fascia work in. A little couch, there's my journal, as a little knock so I know what I'm writing in the dark. A little blacked out tape recorder that hopefully will work. My little sink. Here's me. And this is the, again, those mala beads that five-year-old Ananda picked out for me. And uh, bees and my mantra with these. And hopefully remembering where my toothbrush is. And then a little bathroom in here, a little shower, everything. And then this is where I'll eat. And then there's the door. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. A little four seasons. <laughs> I'm a... Uh, Man, I don't know. It's getting close, so I'm gonna get my mind right. You'll just see me on the other side. Darkawaska. Lights flashing in the corners of my eyes. Constant visuals. Imagine an ayahuasca ceremony. <laughs> and it doesn't end. It just keeps going. <laughs>